Hello there, I've had a question sent to me. A gentleman by the name of Chris. He's got a Transcom GBX 4000. And he's got some snags with the receive. And with the SRF meter not working. Well, we haven't got a Transcom 4000 in for service at the moment. But what we have got is a Mustang CB1000, which uses the same chassis. And I was hunting high and low for the service manual for the Fidelity 2001, which uses the same chassis. But unfortunately, I can't find the Fidelity service manuals at all. I must have mislaid those somewhere. So what we've done is to dig out the Amstrad manual. It uses the same uh, chassis, but the difference is the Amstrad has the uh, what they always call the fairy lights, the LED bar graph display for the S and the RF meter, which is driven by a BA656 um, single in line chip, whereas the Mustang has the conventional meter, as does the Transcom GBX4000. Now this is as it's coming, I've got absolutely no idea what it's going to do. What I have done is to find a power lead and plug that in. And we'll plug that into our test set as well. And if I can find the uh, loudspeaker one, extension speak goes into there. There we go. The case screws are all out on this set and this is as it's come in so that's a bit worrying. Oops, there's Trevor on the bottom. So that's taking the loudspeaker lid off. Better take the bottom to see whether there's anything horrible inside. No, that looks all right. Good grief, there's bits of plastic come out with it. Oh, it's the case coming away at the side there. I can see we're going to be busy with the glue gun. I'm going to do this in three videos for you. And with some specific information for Chris with his snag with his um, similar chassis transcom. Oh, I've turned it on and it's lit up. And select channel 20. I always refer to this as the economy uh, cybernetic chassis. They were a cybernet chassis. And it would be wrong to call it the Amstrad chassis because it was a Cybernet economy one. They work very well. Now then, we're going to do the VCO first. Right, I've connected the multimeter up to the chassis. I've got the positive prod, we're on the 20 volt range, we need to locate capacitor 9 which is this green capacitor. This one here. And it's the back terminal because you've got one at the front and you've got one at the back. And how this is how it's supposed to work. Just zoom back out again. We're on channel 1, and on channel 1, we're in receive mode, and we adjust transformer 1 for 2 volts. And transformer 1 is the one just there. And it's supposed to use a non-metallic tool for this, and I don't have a non-metallic tool that uh, fits this type of coil. So it's put it in, take it out type of uh, arrangement. I've just overshot it there. 
Okay, just over 2 volts we've got. And then we need to go into transmit. So go into transmit. And we're supposed to, again, have 2 volts. We can just adjust that. And it's CT1. Just back that off a fraction. 1.99, that'll do nicely. Back to receive, 2.07. Back to transmit, it's 2.2, that's fine. So now, we'll go to channel 40 and check where the lock is there. Well, it's supposed to be somewhere around about 4 volts on receive. Well, it's 3.4. That's fine, That's uh, we're in lock there. And the same on transmit, it's 3.4. Absolutely fine. So it's now properly in lock because as I've said many times before, the last thing you want is to send the radio back to the customer and they find it only transmits from channel 37 or, or channel 40 upwards or something. It's absolutely, you don't want channels uh, and, and things dropping out. So information for now for Chris with this inquiry, you need to check that the receive VCO is set because if you've got no receive, it is always possible that the VCO is out. And as I say, it's capacitor 11, it's the furthest away most terminal towards the back of the set. It's um, T transformer 1 for receive. And you're looking at 2 volts on channel 1, 4 volts ish on channel 40. And then on transmit, it's uh, CT number 1 there. And again, you're looking for 2 volts on transmit on channel 1. And you're looking for about 4 volts on channel 40. So that is how the VCO is set. Uh, again directed at Chris, one of the reasons you can not have receive on these sets is diode 11 can fail and diode 11 is somewhere around about there. You've got that uh, transformer there. It's, uh, there's a couple of diodes there and uh, one of those can fail. That can lead you to no receive. If the set's been reverse polarity and a lot of them can end up with that happening and it destroys the protection diode and the protection diode, let's see whether we can locate that. I'll just use a plastic tool. It's that, it's that one down there. It's okay on this set. But if you've once had it reverse polarity and if you've got the wrong fuse in the lead, because it should be fused at something like 3 amps, if there's no fuse or there's a 20 amp car fuse or something like that, you can end up destroying the protection diode. And if that doesn't get replaced the next time you have a, a polarity error, then it will destroy quite a few parts. And they've already said you've changed the audio IC, which of course is there. But the other thing it can take out, but you do say you've got the FM hiss, it can also take out the uh, LA, uh, what is it? One, two, three, oh which is the IF subsystem, it's a Sanyo chip. Um, so that's there on these sets. So it can take that out. One of the things to check is does the squelch work? And if it doesn't, that can be another dead giveaway that that's faulty. But if there's no receive, that can be one of the things. We're going to go on to receive uh, in another couple of videos. So we'll conclude this here and then we'll move on to the transmitter.